Hi, this is Daniel from Score Esports here after uh, Smash 4 and Evo ended with CLG's Void. And I guess I want to start by asking you, you know, how you feel about how, uh, how Evo went. Um, results wise, I feel like it was really good. Just because even though it was like two out of three for the majority of the tournament, a lot of players still did try their hardest. But at the least, like, I think the scheduling could have been better. Mm -hmm. Even though the way they ran it, they had two setups per pool and they ran round two pools a little late, both in when they started and when they put it in the schedule. So I feel like even with all of those, as long as top 32 started a little later on Saturday, it would have been more manageable. So, I mean, speaking of, of the scheduling, you just said, like, there, there were a little bit of scheduling issues. Do you feel like that, I guess, impacted people's play at all, like the way the, the tournament went for them individually? Yes. After facing Reggie, he actually said, oh, you know, I kind of wish I had more sleep because that way I, he could be playing better. And not everybody in the Smash community is going to be really good at playing on three or four hours of sleep. Some people finish at like 12, midnight, and then we have to get up at like seven at the latest to make it to the venue at eight to already start playing. So that's like six hours, seven hours of sleep at most. And it's not always easy playing when you're sleepy, you're on edge, and you're thinking, why couldn't I have gotten more sleep? Why did the scheduling have to be like this? So it distracted a lot of players and it made them play in a situation they weren't comfortable in. What would you want to see changed about Smash 4 Evo next year if you want, if, you know, to make it better for players? If you have 8 a.m. pools and you have 8 p.m. like round two pools, that's already setting up for like a pretty bad day two. But it would be like a little more manageable if they just split up the scheduling more. Either that or run pools like a little better because round two pools being at eight wasn't too bad for everyone, but some people were barely starting to play at nine. I heard of some people starting at 9.30. So it's like you waited all this time for 8 p.m. and then it's getting delayed, so you're waiting even more. So I just, I just wish the schedule would be better. That's my number one priority, to be honest. Was it one of those things that might be fixed by having a Sunday final just to give the tournament more breathing room? Do you think that like Smash 4 should have you know, the Sunday finals? I think either like on Sunday or later on Saturday, not in the morning. We could spread it out way more on Saturday, but instead we had it all in the morning, back to back, like top 32 started and we went immediately into top 8. And I feel like that just wasn't a good use of your time when you have almost 2,700 people in a tournament. So I want to talk about you know your you know your your run you know fourth place is you know it's, it's an impressive finish definitely yeah. but you've had a lot of good matches kind of on the way there so I think off camera we talking a little bit about your match against Reggie and you mentioned that he kind of was feeling that he needed more sleep but yeah. uh, you know moving after that one I think you played Vinny next yes so you know that was you know Sheik versus Sheik I think that one was what do you you know what do you think of how do you feel about Sheik right now you know she got nerfed her kill confirms are kind of weaker definitely but you know is she definitely seems strong like yeah. where, where do you think Sheik's at right now well. I think over time, Sheik will keep getting stronger because us as players will keep getting better. And if you have a character that's just, like their biggest strong suit is the neutral game, if you get better at not losing neutral, you're gonna just do better. And there have been times where I'm like, you know, maybe Sheik's a little weaker and like my own results have like wavered. But in the end, like I came to EVO, I played only Sheik and I got fourth, beating Ken, one of the best Sonics in Japan, who thinks Sonic wins the matchup, and Renai, who went game five with zero with pre-patch Sheik. So that just shows like, even though I had the matchup in experience, I have so much experience with Sheik that Sheik herself is still a very strong character. And there's so much more room to grow. She's not a linear character at all. Speaking of not being a linear character, you're known as being like the flashy Sheik as having those, those incredible like, you know, combos that people just don't expect. Yeah. You know, how do you feel about that kind of being your identity as Sheik? And do you think that's something that more people can start exploring as her, you know, the possibilities of her. I think it's probably like one of Sheik's best strong suits, but in myself as a player, it's really strong because I just exert that much pressure. Like if I touch you, you might just die or, oh, I'm at 80% and you just got your stock back. If you got hit, we might be even. And just the sheer fact that that pressure exists makes players like a little more scared. Mm -hmm. So. I don't think it's necessarily like the way to go, but I think you need it in order to be a strong Sheik. Because like I said, Sheik's neutral game is her strong point. 
And if you know how to win neutral once and convert it as hard as I can, then you can go very far with Sheik, even though you like kill power. So what did you think of, uh, unfortunately I didn't get to watch it, you know, how, how do you think of your, your match with Vinny? Like what do you think of sort of Sheik, for, you know, obviously Sheik versus Sheik is 50-50, but what do you think of kind of his style of Sheik and, and I guess kind of Sheik's in general right now? Um, it's like, it's pretty strong, but it's like whenever, whenever I'll go into certain Sheik dittos, like it'll be my style of Sheik versus their Sheik. The main thing that'll always happen is if I'm behind, like if I lose neutral two or three times and I win neutral once, we're tied. Mm -hmm. And if you take into the account, like, oh, what if I didn't lose neutral? What if I just won neutral the first time? Then I have such a huge lead that they have to win neutral two to three times to catch up. So that style of Sheik is very strong, but it requires you to play more perfect because you have to keep winning neutral and you have to keep getting the right reads. And when that kind of stuff starts to happen or when you start losing, and the other person has like a good amount of rage, then it's a lot easier for Sheik to die. And then you played Renai after that, and, and, and you won that as well. And Renai definitely, you know, he's sort of a very kind of individual character. There definitely there are other vigil, villager players, but do you find that kind of Renai is unique unique among them, and just being such a, I guess, a high level villager? Yeah, <laughs> playing him and watching him was phenomenal. It's Smash Four is a game filled with little things that make players extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And Renai is filled with so many of those little things that I know a lot of players don't notice. Like the way Renai will like short hop, the way Renai moves when he short hops, how he spaces his moves when he does his moves, how he chooses his options. It's so amazing to watch mm -hmm. that you know that his mind games is way above any other player, at least playing villager. Mm -hmm. So seeing someone like that is just, it's amazing. So where do you think, I guess, you know, spe speaking of that, where do you think the game is at, you know, balance-wise? Who do you, I mean, let's start with that before we start getting specific characters. Like, how do you feel about where the game is right now? It's balanced to the point that it's scary <laughs> as a competitor because we have a really big cast, meaning you have to know almost every matchup. Mm -hmm. If you don't know every matchup, there's a very high chance that you'll get upset. Mm -hmm. That's why Smash 4, in my opinion, has a lot of inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know the matchups, you could very easily face someone that's like the hero of that character. Yeah. And it's very easy to get swarmed by a lot of tricks that you don't know, a lot of these little things that make those characters who they are. That's, that's, I mean, definitely we saw a lot of that this weekend. We saw, you know, I mean, Kamamushi did incredible with Mega Man as a character that very few people saw coming. So I was wondering, you know, we have the low tiers. Who do you think are, is strong right now? And are there any characters you think are being slept on? Um... If I would say any character is being slept on, I would practically say the whole cast. Because there are even like characters that are really strong that are being slept on. Which is kind of weird to say like, oh, you know, this character is like winning. How can you sleep on a character that's winning? Well, this game just has so much more to it that can still be pushed. Mm -hmm. So it's like, if I think a character is like top tier right now, like say I think a character is like eighth on the tier list. they very much have the potential to skyrocket if somebody just finds out the certain things or they just start playing the right way or they just pick the right options. So we're not at the point where we know how strong each character is mm -hmm. and the results keep switching around. The results are very wishy-washy. Yeah. So it's like, it's interesting to think about it that way, but it's also like, of course, scary. Are there any matchups then that you find that you kind of want to know more, like certain characters that you think like, this is a character that maybe I don't see as often, but I think this is a matchup I want to know? Um, Palutena is a very slept on character. Mm -hmm. And you've seen that uh, Prince Ramen beat yeah. Zero at CEO. TLTC, SoCal Palutena, he's very strong as well. Um, a lot of the heavy characters, mm -hmm. they're very tricky mm -hmm. because they have, they have the tools to do really good, even if like the general consensus is like, oh, just like camp them. Like they're heavy, they're slow. But then you give them stage control, which is very important in this game. You can't kill them, they have rage. So when it comes to facing the heavier characters, you really need to know the matchup. You need to know how to kill them, how they want to kill you, and how to avoid those things. So more often I would say like heavy characters. Something else that's been kind of making, you know, a lot of kind of noise right now has been people playing counter pick a lot. And it didn't didn't really come up too much at EVA. I know I think we saw Kamamushi try Yoshi yeah. in one of his rounds. Zero went back to Sheik for something against Kamamushi, but we didn't see a ton of counter picking. 
Do you think that it's, you know, is counterpicking actually as, as viable as it might be being made out to be? And is it something that you were even like considering exploring? I think counterpicking is pretty strong, but it's also, it takes a lot of time and effort. I think about counterpicking like a fairly decent amount. I have practiced Fox and Mewtwo a lot. Actually, this week I practiced a lot of Fox mm -hmm. because I knew I would face characters that I might need to go Fox against. And I didn't use them once. So while counterpicking is strong, I do think there are still characters that are like solo viable, mm -hmm. which the main case is being, I think Sheik is solo viable. Sheik, probably Sheik, Sonic, and Mario. Mm -hmm. I think they would be like the top three solo viable characters. But outside of that, you would be advised to counterpick mm -hmm. because there are so many matchups in this game that if you happen to pick the wrong matchup, you could very easily get swarmed. Yeah, definitely with a cast, you know, like you're saying, like cast is big, one of the biggest casts in fighting games, I think. Um, we had a top four with players from four different countries, right? We had you from the you, you from US, we had uh, Zero from Chile, and though he's living in the US now, but, you know, from Chile, we've got uh, Kamushi from Japan, we have Ally from Canada, you know. It was one of the most international top eights we've seen, actually, I think, at all of EVO this weekend. H how do you feel about, like, kind of Smash Bros. like, growing international scene? And I know it started as being mostly US, but we're seeing a lot of international development now. The international scene is starting to get a lot stronger and that makes me really happy because it just shows there, there's a lot of ways that a meta can grow mm -hmm. and if you keep a meta contained it's only going to grow in that specific way. So if we have people in the US that place, face people in Mexico, it's already different metas. Mm -hmm. Different metas are clashing. We don't know how they play, they don't know how we play. They're used to how they play, we're used to how we play. So it helps you overall get better at the game. And I feel like the best way for a game to be entertaining is not to be like gimmicky. And I don't mean gimmick as like a low tier, but I also mean gimmick in the sense that I only know how to play against people that are playing this way. So if I'm a top level player, if I'm watching a top level player, what I wanna see, I wanna see them be able to take on any type of play style. Mm -hmm. And that sort of proficiency will only happen if there's different types of metas clashing. So what do you think are the differences in kind of like international metas? You know, we've got a lot of strong players from Mexico. We have Hugo, we have Reggie, we have Leo, then we have the Japanese contingent. Especially we had like this, this weekend, we had, you know, Earth did really well, Renai did well, Abadango did well, Kamamushi obviously did well. And we had, um, you know, I, I think I think Ally is relatively close to me, like say yeah. the North American meta. What, what do you find are, I guess, like the, the little differences, if you can kind of point them out at all? So East Coast America is generally seen as the more patient region. And Ally isn't necessarily like East Coast, but he does like, he's in the Midwest. So East Coast players, they'll play more patient, they'll see what you're doing, and they'll slowly condition you into the way that they want you to play. Mm -hmm. West Coast America is generally seen as the more aggressive play style. And what they'll do is they'll try their best to rush you down, high, high reaction times, like strong reads, but they won't go for it as often. It's more like, I want you to do this, do that. And then they'll keep going for it, they'll keep pressuring you. Japan is the zoners. Japan, seeing their results, they have very strong zoning characters making it into top eight. And they don't really see like the aggro characters there as much. So Ryu won't get strong results in Japan. Like Sheik's, Sheik is like a zoning character, but since she takes so long to kill, it can backfire very easily. Mm -hmm. So you won't see those types of characters in Japan. You'll see like Duck Hunt, Villager, Mewtwo's, some Rosalina's, stuff like that. You know, we have a lot of tournaments coming up, you know, this summer, you know, leading into, um, actually, I'm not even sure which one's the last one, but we have a ton of stuff between now and basically September. Yeah. You know, are, are you feeling any sort of, like, tournament burnout? Like, you're just going to too many, or is it something that doesn't necessarily, like, come, come at you? Actually, before EVO, I think for six straight weekends, I traveled to mm -hmm. tournaments. And I did feel burned out, so I took, like, a five-day break, and I was good. Mm -hmm. So... Me, like as an individual, I go to a lot of tournaments in SoCal, so I'm kind of used to going to tournaments. Like I've conditioned myself to get used to the fact like, oh, I'm going to a tournament today, uh, two days from now I'm going to another tournament, oh, tomorrow I'm going to another tournament. So I have like the mental stamina to be able to go to X amount of tournaments, but even me, like I do feel burned out every so often. And it's very important to be aware when you get burned out. Like, you don't want to be burned out and then keep trying to go full force. It's not going to work. You don't want to, like, get in the wrong mindset because of that.
So what do you, you know, what do you, what is, I guess, your, your burnout recovery strategy? Like, what do you do to make yourself try to, like, relax and feel a bit better with it? Sometimes I'll just go on, like, an hour-long walk and just listen to music and just think about, like, oh, why am I burned out? Uh, what do I want to do? Like, think about my goals in the future and think about what led me to being burned out and think about, like, how do I feel right now? Like, take some time to yourself, pretty much. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm not doing that, I actually just, like, I really like playing RPGs, mm -hmm. so I take some time off and I just play RPGs. Yeah, I was gonna ask, like, what are the RPGs you like to play right now? Right now, like, what's, what's, what are you what are you into right now? Uh, actually, like, at this very moment, so I'm playing Final, a Final Fantasy Tactics for the DS, Bravely Default, Legend of Dragoon, really old game, mm -hmm. and I bought one of the Tales games, Tales of the Abyss. Mm -hmm. So those are all games I'm trying to play right now <laughs> because last week I was burned out. Yeah. So I have a lot in that regard, but of course I have to practice Smash too.